Welcome everyone to another observability clinic, another one on open telemetry, a developer's guide to open telemetry for Java, Go or serverless telemetry to Dynatrace. I have invited yet another expert within Dynatrace, one of my colleagues, Reinhard Pilz. Servus. Hi, Abi. Hey, thank you so much for doing this. And I, I really want to be short on words because I think the title says it all. We want to hear from you how developers can instrument their applications and with open telemetry and then sending data to Dynatrace and how all of this looks like. I know you've prepared a great hands-on tutorial that you've delivered at Perform and we have a condensed version today here as part of the Observability Clinic. With this, Reinhard, take it away. Okay. So whoever has watched the other performance clinic about open telemetry uh, might have seen um, uh, this overview already a bit. But let's talk about what open telemetry in general is about and where one agent and Dynatrace chime in here. With open telemetry, you essentially have two big topics. One of them is sending traces. The other one is sending metrics. With one agent and Dynatrace, you have here two options. Um, either you have an application where one agent is active as usual, but whatever is being captured is getting enriched by open telemetry, meaning, so you have, for instance, a, a Java framework that's not supported yet by one agent sensors or a database driver in Go where uh, Dynatrace doesn't provide suitable capturing. This is where you can leverage open telemetry in order to nevertheless capture traces about that. And you essentially don't even have to uh, do a lot in order to get this visible because one agent takes care of sending that data directly via one agent protocol to Dynatrace. That's the most comfortable way to use open telemetry, but there are of course other situations where um, one agent simply cannot get injected for various reasons. Could be an operating system that's not supported, could be uh, your inability to even have access to the operating system, uh, like um, a, um, a Lambda function in the cloud. Also here, open telemetry offers a way to capture data. The only difference between the use case before is that uh, you don't necessarily have a way to automatically send off the data. Um, in open telemetry, uh, this is called a span exporter. It just needs to be configured um, with an endpoint where the data has to go to. Um, the beauty with Dynatrace is that Dynatrace natively speaks the OTLP protocol, which means you can directly from your application by configuring the span exporter in the open telemetry SDK send off data to Dynatrace. And optionally, so let's say the container or a host that runs your application is not allowed to send off data to anywhere, can also use an open telemetry collector in between. That's a component that's designed, especially for these use cases, where you have a hub in between your application and the monitoring uh, solution that captures this data um, that is um, by default, just forwarding the data, but it could also convert it into a different protocol if that's necessary. When it comes to metrics, it's pretty similar. So open telemetry, the SDK of open telemetry offers a way to report metrics um, uh, from your application to anyone who is interested in it. And if it's possible, you just have to include the, um, the metrics exporter from Dynatrace which takes care of, well, allows you to, uh, to define what metric with counter you want to add, for instance, and it translates it into a, uh, into a language that Dynatrace understands. That's uh, our uh, custom Dynatrace metrics protocol. There is a protocol in the works from the Open Telemetry Initiative that also should be standardized, and I'm pretty sure we will, uh, we will support it um, sooner or later. But right now, that's the safest way to get metrics into Dynatrace when it comes to open telemetry. Whether an agent sits inside that application is optional. That doesn't matter. You are relying um, solely on the open telemetry exporter, metric exporter from Dynatrace. And last but not least, so let's say you don't have, you have a technology where there doesn't exist a, a build for the 
uh, matrix exporter from Dynatrace, you are still not out of luck. You still can use a default a matrix exporter from, um, uh, uh, from the Open Telemetry SDK that talks a language Dynatrace doesn't understand, but since there exists the Open Telemetry collector, uh, and the collector is written in a, in a, in a te uh, technology where we have an exporter for, you can simply send off that data to the collector. Our exporter in there converts that OTLP matrix into the matrix protocol Dynatrace is able to understand. This is, in a nutshell, what Open Telemetry offers and where Dynatrace comes into play. So for today, we have shrunk this down into, uh, into a small application that um, pretty much uses all of these use cases. One of them is um, a Java front-end uh, microservice where one agent can get injected by default. The second one is a microservice where there's no agent inside, where you're still able to send off uh, traces. And we even have set up a Lambda function in AWS where we can showcase uh, what uh, kind of data is being produced. As mentioned before, this is a mixture of sending, uh, capturing data and sending it off via one agent protocol, via the metrics protocol of, um, uh, of our REST API, or uh, via the OTLP, pro uh, OTLP endpoint, um, uh, OTLP uh, traces endpoint that, uh, receives, uh, uh, that receives open telemetry spans automatically. Hey, Ryan, I just want to mm -hmm. say thank you so much for this overview. I think this is the most clearest explanation I've seen of, that kind of brings all of these different options together, starting from you have the one agent that already instruments Java or .NET or whatever it is, but then you want to add additional data through open telemetry or just traces directly, or then also the metrics. I mean, this is, for me, uh, really great explained. And now that you have a sample app as well where you show us all the different steps. Thank you so much. That's really nice. Yeah, and essentially, um, purpose of this talk today is uh, to showcase that open telemetry is not rocket science. It's just augmenting mm -hmm. your application with uh, traces. So yeah, thank you. Yeah. Well, and that's a good uh, a good place to start with a demo. I don't want to bore anyone with uh, slides. As I said, we have created a small application that showcases that. Where do we want to end up? We want to essentially be able to create a dashboard that collect uh, that uh, show, uh, shows and monitors um, certain data that has been collected from from our applications. Like you can do it with uh, one agent alone. The, the difference here is just that all this data here comes from uh, com, com, uh, comes in because of open telemetry enrichment. So it's nothing different. I just want to show that it's perfectly possible with Dynatrace to use open telemetry no matter whether one agent is involved or not. So how do we get there? Um, for the day, I've managed to compress everything down into one single pure path where we can see everything, at least I hope so. So let's take a look at that. Um, this pure path starts like any other, uh, other pure path. Um, with an incoming HTTP call captured by one agent alone. And also JDBC calls are being captured by Dynatrace. Where it is different is now this node here. Uh, obviously because of the icon here, which uh, doesn't seem to come from one agent natively. So how let, let's take a look into the source code in order to see um, what's necessary in order to make this visible. This is our small shop product controller where every details page has to get routed through. And here we can see here the initial method that does nothing else than sending out yet another HTTP request to another service. That version down here is essentially the enriched version that uh, tells one agent via open telemetry SDK that we would like to have an additional node in here. So there's quite a lot of boilerplate code, uh, code necessary, at least if your initial, initial uh, business logic is just one line, but it's essentially not, uh, not much to talk about. What do you need in order, to, uh, in order to, uh, to get there? You have to create a tracer. So the Open Telemetry SDK wants to know what kind of tracer that is. You have to give it a name and a version. Dynatrace is also interested in that. 
We can see that later. And then you're creating a span. It's the first node in your uh, in, in, in your tracer. Um, we name it here node. Uh, what's much more important because well, just having a node in your pure path doesn't give you a lot more uh, insight. Of course, you would like to qualify it a bit. And here we are capturing so-called attributes, the reference that's getting passed here and the unique identifier. Then we are starting the span and we are just doing whatever was, uh, uh, was necessary previously in order to make the application run. Let's go back to Dynatrace and look at this in detail. What kind of, uh, because we want to know what of that is visible within Dynatrace. So if we take a, a look at this quote node, we can see, yeah, the attribute reference is in, uh, indeed getting captured by Dynatrace. But what about the UID? So that's a span attribute that is not getting stored. Dynatrace knows it's there, but it doesn't store it. Why are we behaving like that? Couldn't we just capture, uh, capture everything? Well, let's just assume this wouldn't be a unique ID identifier, but a credit card number or something. So capturing everything by default could be dangerous regarding security, but we can easily add that. So every additional, uh, every, every future span that comes in uh, will contain the value of the unique identifier in here. And actually you have full control over what is being stored and what is not being stored. If we take a look at the, at the settings for the span attributes here, you can see that it, this is pretty populated already, not by me, but these are span attributes that are, let's say, well-known, um, or they kind of are industry standards. So Dynatrace knows that uh, all these Cassandra um, attributes uh, are supposed to be there somewhere when there's access to uh, being made to Cassandra. Same thing about databases and so on. None of that is uh, prone to contain confidential data. That's why we are configuring it uh, by default. Yeah, and our reference here is already pre-configured. Um, the setting is pretty easy. It's just adding one additional uh, name uh, for an attribute in here. That's how you tell Dynatrace, yes, I want to see this value within, uh, within my pure pass. And that actually comes in handy if you want to, for instance, qualify your pure pass via uh, request attributes. Because if we go over here, and I look for the reference, the source for this request attribute is actually a span attribute. So this is something we have added in order to be fully compliant with, uh, with uh, open telemetry. Every, every piece of data that can be captured by our open telemetry uh, is available. And Reinhard, just, mm -hmm. uh, this is great. I didn't know that. So that means uh, all the span attributes become metadata on the pure path, which means I can do things like uh, even, you know, obviously I, I can filter easily. I can do all of my ad hoc analysis. I can say Dynatrace, show me all the distributed traces where this particular reference has a certain value, or I can also then use it to do calculated service metrics. So I could say, give me the response time of my spans where this particular span attribute has a certain value. Exactly the, uh, the point about that. So. Yeah. By uh, using the request attribute and using the, the span attributes as a source, you can do exactly the same things you're used to with a normal pure pass where the data originates from one agent. Same thing. That's really powerful. And mm -hmm. just one technical question, just from my understanding, the, the span configuration you showed earlier where we say we want to capture it, does this mm -hmm. then mean from a technical perspective, is this handled on the receiving end? So Dynatrace itself then knows whether it should store it, yes or no? Or is this something that it actually technically gets propagated back to the open telemetry SDK in the app? And if it's not even on, it's not even captured on the application. I'm not sure if you know these technical details, but it would be interesting. So, that depends really on uh, uh, how, how the traces come into Dynatrace. So let's say you have one agent sitting in there of course, one agent is, a, is, is able mm -hmm. to already strip out that value uh, right away uh, on the, uh, uh, within the application. But if you are using trace ingest because there's no one agent present, mm -hmm. of course, that decision has to be made within the Dynatrace okay. cluster. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, and since we are already here in the settings, um, 
what you have seen here in this uh, code snippet is pretty much everything you have to do in order to, uh, to get traces into, uh, into Dynatrace for this use case. Why? Because if we go here into our deep monitoring settings, there's a whole section about open telemetry and open tracing. By turning on this feature here, you essentially are telling the Dynatrace uh, or one agent to, uh, to intercept any kind of calls to the open telemetry SDK and take care of transporting uh, the data directly to Dynatrace. No detour via exporter, that's being taken care of you automatically. And you have that for certain, uh, for, for various uh, technologies. I just turn it on here for Java and Go because that's what I uh, usually work with. Uh, and I, if I'm not mistaken, don't don't kill me if it's not true. But I think by default, any new any new environment will have that enabled uh, by default already. So let's go back. What did we cover? We already have enriched our Java code, where one agent sits inside with Open Telemetry. We also have talked about um, span attributes. Now let's uh, move on to our second service. That's the one where these outbound calls are getting directed to. This is a Go application. And by default, you wouldn't have any difficulties capturing that with one agent alone. Just in our, our case, we have done something special. We have used a version of Golang that's not yet supported by Dynatrace, so one agent cannot get injected. But still, we are seeing these incoming calls and these additional nodes. You can see the icon is still open telemetry, so it's not one agent that captures that automatically. We can also we also have a hint that it's uh, that there is something missing on the Go side because we just have client side metadata here. So uh, whoever is very experienced with Dynatrace, if you just see client side metadata and no server side metadata, you know something has. Uh, um, hasn't got injected properly. But yeah, I digress. Let's take a look at what's necessary within the, uh, with the use case of Go to make this work. As I said, we don't have an agent sitting inside, so nobody takes care of transporting the data to Dynatrace. We have to configure that manually. There are various ways to do that. You can do it programmatically, like I did, it, uh, did in here. You can usually all also uh, use environment variables and stuff like that to configure the exporter of the open telemetry SDK if you include it. But essentially, it's always about two things. Where is the data supposed to go there? That's my tenant. That's our default endpoint for receiving traces via OTLP, the open telemetry pro protocol. And well, we don't accept traces from anyone. Um, should be you, so you better authorize yourself and um, uh, add an API token in order for uh, to to convince Dynatrace to take uh, take in these uh, traces. There's a bit more to that. You have to configure an exporter, and you have to tell the tracers how to uh, how to handle the spans. That pretty much looks the same in any kind of technology where the uh, the open telemetry SDK is supported. It's just um, it's just um, depending on the technology, a different, a different kind of set of classes here you are using. But essentially, that's about it. And if we take a look down here, when we are handling the quote, it looks similar to what we had in the Java uh, um, on the Java side. So again, we are creating a, a span. It's the Go service quote uh, note here. Um, with a bit more, um, and I want to highlight that. So here we are also specifying what kind of span we are using here. Remember on the Java side, we just said, we want to have a span, it's called quote. Here we are saying, hey, and it needs to be a server span. What, what's, what's that? For Dynatrace, that's actually very important because we don't want to span your system. Here we come to the next, uh, the next setting here about open telemetry. That's the entry point, a span entry point settings. By default, let's say this is a standalone Go application. There's no front end Java application that's monitored. If there's a, a trace coming in that begins with a span that's not a server span, which hints to Dynatrace, well, it's in some sort of incoming, incoming request, we don't start a pure path. Why? Well, it could be something that's internally running in the background. Instead, so these are the default settings you will see in your environments. 
Instead, we are saying, so if it's a client span or an internal span, which is the default uh, kind of span that you're producing with the SDK, or if it's a producer span for asynchronous uh, communication, then we are suppressing it. It doesn't mean it's getting, uh, it's getting thrown away. So if there's already an ongoing pure path, of course, these client spans, these servers are, uh, and these uh, uh, internal spans will be taken into consideration. But if it's the first span in a trace, we say, no, it's not allowed to start a pure path. And you can actually add uh, a lot of uh, rules in here. It doesn't necessarily have to be the span kind. So if you want to customize that, you can also say, well, I kind of want to start a pure path if the instrumentation library is some, uh, it's a very specific one because here I want to start the pure path anytime, no matter whether it's internal or server side or not. You also can check what a specific attribute is on there. But by default, our rules are very, are very, are very simple. We just say client, internal, and producer spans should not start pure paths. But you can customize that to your uh, to your uh, needs. Let's take another look into that, uh, into, into these spans, because there's one other thing I didn't address here, and that's the topic of span propagation. Uh, what's that? It's not that, uh, 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 that obvious that um, this outgoing call here that's being made in Java that ends up here uh, in, um, in our Go application should be connected within the pure path right away. How is this being done? Uh, we internally in Dynatrace uh, very often call it pure path stitching. Uh, the official name now is, uh, is context propagation. So you have to find a way to transfer some sort of metadata over the, uh, over the wire, in this case via HTTP protocol, in order to tell, uh, tell the monitoring solutions that two, uh, two traces belong together. That's being done with, uh, with context propagation. And that line here, we don't go into detail here, just uh, tells open telemetry, hey, look at the headers. There should be something in, uh, important for you that allows you to, uh, to correlate this server-side pure path or this server-side trace with a trace from somewhere else. And what kind of headers are these? Well, we actually can see it. If we look, for instance, no, let's go here. If we look at the metadata here, we have a trace ID, we have a span ID, and we have a parent span ID. These three values are the ones that are being transferred as HTTP headers if you are setting up span propagation properly. We have to do it manually here in our Go application. In our Java application, we don't have to do anything because an outgoing HTTP call is already getting uh, injected with the necessary headers in order to make this work. And also here we uh, can take another look into the settings for deep monitoring. There's an option that you better turn on in order to make this work with any kind of open telemetry uh, setup. And that's the distributed tracing setting here. As you can see, uh, when uh, the, the decision, what kinds of headers are being sent uh, could be using a proprietary uh, header that's being used by Dynatrace for the last 15 years, or um, you could also say, no, don't, don't use, uh, use, uh, use the stuff Dynatrace uses, use, use the headers open telemetry understands, which means any kind of other monitoring solution can benefit from, these, uh, from this header, and you, uh, you, do, you don't uh, lock into, uh, yourself into one specific vendor. Last thing about our, uh, our Go application is the matter of resource attributes. So in addition to attribute a specific span, one single pure path node, you can also let Dynatrace know about the, the nature and the origin of the tracer that produced these spans. So in this case, the important one I want to highlight is the, the service name. Let's go over to the pure paths and take a look at it. If we um, where is it? Yeah, here it is. So here we can see the service.name. That's a resource attribute Dynatrace automatically uh, stores because it's very important for us. There's no agent is sitting inside. Nothing uh, makes for us a decision to, let's say, name our service 
because this attribute was available on the tracer, Dynatrace knows exactly how to call this, uh, how, to, how to call the service that contains this pure path. And there are various other attributes available here. Uh, some of them uh, we saw in the source code added um, specifically. Some of them are always there. And like with the with the span attributes, you have the choice of, or uh, you have the, uh, you can choose what uh, uh, which attributes are of interest uh, for you and which are not. So right now that list is not populated. So except for a couple of well-known um, uh, resource attributes, Dynatrace doesn't care about them, but the service name is very important for us. So that's why we're taking it. And like with the, uh, with the other, uh, with the span attributes, you can easily with one click uh, tell Dynatrace, hey, take all of that because I might be able to use it for a, re for a request attribute or um, in order to qualify pure pass uh, better. Can you also, uh, Reinhard, quick question, mm -hmm. uh, really great, thanks for that, because I didn't know that there's a difference between span attributes and then resource attributes. Can I also use these resource attributes to then do some tagging on maybe the, the service itself, because I can see on the top, the Go service black box, that's kind of your service? That's a good question, and I don't know the answer to it, so let's put it to the test. <laughs> uh, if you, um, just, just really quick, maybe we can see it. Yeah. So let's create a tag. Mm -hmm. uh, let's automate. I use an automatically applied tag. Create a tag. I don't care what it's called, mm -hmm. and we want to tag services. services yeah. And essentially, if it's possible already, then we should find it as a resource attribute. Let me. No, it's not there. Maybe the then, maybe it's, I think it, made, it, makes, it makes a lot of sense that it's coming, right? Because then... um, yeah, I, I, you actually asked me a question I, I, I never thought about, but it's, it's actually, yeah, that would be great because like with span attributes, you would like to qualify your pure path. So using mm -hmm. that information for automatic tagging would make sense. Mm -hmm. um, potentially, they are already working on it and mm -hmm. uh, we just don't know it. Yeah, That's perfect. Question. Yeah. I will bring it up. Uh, let's do a follow up on this. Cool. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. So we talked about resource attributes. There's one more thing we haven't addressed, and that's also something Dynatrace does or usually out of the box, and that's error handling. So what if your business logic has some issues? In this case, what if our Fibonacci uh, function uh, delivers an error? There, is, there are ways with open telemetry to tell that to the agent. You just add an uh, event of type exception, and you're adding, again, attributes to your event. In this case, these are standardized attributes. The exception type and the exception me message um, give you a bit more insight into what happened. Uh, if you om omit them, well, um, an error has occurred, so you don't want to, want to have that. So that's why we enriched our, our error handling a bit with open telemetry code. We also set the status properly. If we go back to our pure path and look at this process node um, that had an error, like with any other exception that gets captured in a, uh, in a Java application, or um, if you're uh, getting back something different from zero in a native application, you can use that in order to, uh, in, uh, to validate whether this is a failed, uh, a failed transaction or not. Um, like with any other, uh, other error, it raises um, the failure rate of your application if it happens in, uh, in, the, in the very first node of your application. And we will see later on that we can even utilize this, um, uh, utilize this in, in a much better way than just um, looking at the failure rate of services. Which brings us to, um, to the next topic, and that's about metrics. We haven't addressed that yet. Um, we don't go into the, uh, the full way, uh, uh, full content of how to uh, how to create a, uh, an actual uh, actual metric here with Open Telemetry SDK. But again, for configuration purposes, what do you have to do? You have to tell the our Dynatrace metrics exporter, which is the default choice in order to send Open Telemetry metrics to Dynatrace. You have to give it an endpoint, so it's not the trace ingest endpoint; it's the metrics ingest endpoint. And of course, you have to authenticate yourself. That's about it. Everything else 
once you have configured uh, the meter providers and um, the actual uh, the actual meters, you can use uh, readily away. In our case, we have here. Um, whenever the page is being displayed, we are adding uh, one to a counter, and we are also using open telemetry again calls it attributes dynatrace calls it for metrics dimensions you can also uh, you can also add dimensions here so it's something that dynatrace can should, should be uh, should easily be able to ingest and that's actually true if we go back to our dashboard and for instance take a look at that tile in the data explorer the only thing you have to do is to open up the drop down look for the uh, for the name of the metric that's being advertised so we call it ref counter here and whatever attributes are on these on this metric can be used in order to split by it metric source is something Dynatrace always has in there so that's something that doesn't come from open telemetry but the reference definitely comes uh, from the fact that we are adding here an, a, a dimension. If you om omit it, you just cannot split it in, our, uh, in the data explorer, but that's about it. So let me get rid of that. So, and the same thing applies to any other metric that, uh, that comes in. It doesn't, does not necessarily have to be um, a single value. It could be, uh, it could be a histogram value. Um, but what's much more important uh, than just sending single values is creating metrics out of the data we already have received. One of them is, uh, is about this chart here. This is about, uh, about alerting. And let me, let, let me keep that open. I think the best way to, uh, is to go here. If we want to configure anomaly detection, we can easily use our spans in order to alert for certain things. And even, uh, even in a much more powerful way than it's uh, possible for services. So in here, we are not just alerting on this, the failure rate of a specific service. We are, counting, uh, we are counting the span failure rate, or you can do the same thing about response time and uh, throughput. Um, ah, this card changes. This is a bit buggy in my, uh, in my tenant today. This card changes. Yes, go away. Uh, and you can uh, you can uh, split by dimension here. So the, the name of the service uh, or the service ide um, uh, identifier in Dynatrace, the name of the service. Remember, this is the resource attribute, or the kind of the span can be here uh, can be used here in order to restrict it down to a specific value or to split by it. And you can use all the monitoring strategies you are used to uh, for any other metric you want to hear uh, want to use here. Using that gives you, uh, 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 gives you an easy way to, al uh, to alert on specific, uh, sp specific uh, or on the failure rate of, of, your, of your open telemetry spans, not just about the services, but on the spans. And last, well, essentially, if we take a look at the data explorer in here, you can mix them up, of course, uh, within the same chart. Same thing as uh, with any other metric in Dynatrace, but it doesn't originate from one agent, just came in via metrics protocol. So, uh, Reinhard, one quick question. That means these, these are out of the box metrics that you, any, that you get anyway, span throughput, failure rate, response time. And always there, yeah. Always there, that's cool. And with all the dimensions that you show, the service name and right. the, the type of span, yeah, that's cool. Which means, uh, which means, uh, open telemetry spans are not a, a second-class citizen in Dynatrace. Mm -hmm. That's really data. Uh, that's really data that, uh, in some way, even gets more love right, uh, right now than pure path nodes. But it's, it's much more powerful now. Mm -hmm. Last but not least, we also have a, have the ability to utilize uh, open telemetry when we are defining our SLOs. Uh, I've pre-confined here, uh, uh, predefined here an SLO that more or less measures how successful my uh, open telemetry uh, uh, functionality was. So 100% would be uh, would be perfect, and um, the higher the failure rate is, um, the uh, the lower the value becomes. So by specifying down here a couple of um, warning and uh, and and error uh, percentages. 
I can yeah, easily uh, easily alert on, or easily um, uh, configure an SLO that measures how how well my 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 monitored not not even service my monitored application does. Really, it really looks at specific uh, spans instead of the whole service. Just made me very happy because SLOs are a big topic that I've been driving for a while. And seeing this example is is really cool. Thank you for that. Yeah, and takes takes literally a minute to configure it. Mm -hmm. So uh, as long as you know how the metric expression language works, but okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, last. What we haven't talked about it about yet is Lambda functions. This is kind of the same thing as our Go application, essentially. It's just how you're getting to the data is a bit different. Let's take a look at the, our documentation because the sample we are running, oh, let's go back to the pure path to explain, uh, explain what's happening. So we have an AWS here, an, a Lambda function it receives uh, web service calls. Um, we are seeing uh, via open telemetry the get, um, uh, the get node. And then uh, DynamoDB is being utilized. We are even forwarding here to an Azure function. Works the same way for that as well, but let's focus on AWS here. We are getting the same, uh, we're getting traces um, without a gap here. How is this getting achieved? And yeah, this is essentially, let's go down here to the tracer, essentially a sample we are having here with additional code that accesses DynamoDB. How do you achieve uh, that a Lambda function suddenly transports tracing data to Dynatrace? Well, that's easily done because um, AWS uh, offers a way to add another layer onto your Lambda function. And this layer more or less is a container that runs the, uh, the open telemetry collector. Nothing that's Dynatrace specific, it's just the open telemetry collector that hopes that somebody uh, uh, it is getting a, uh, getting a, a layered onto um, gives it tracing data. So you're configuring uh, you're configuring this additional layer. Uh, you can use essentially exactly that ARN to do that. And instead of configuring your application to send to Dynatrace, you're now configuring there's this uh, there's this well-known collector YAML uh, file for the for the open telemetry collector. You just tell it, hey, send it to this tenant and use this API token. What's different in the application is that you just specify that, hey, there's a collector waiting for, uh, for, for, for your data, send it to this URL. It will be running on localhost because it's a layer on top of your uh, Lambda function. So as far as you as the application developer are concerned, you don't even uh, have to care about sending it off to somewhere else. That's the most secure way to send off data, uh, uh, open telemetry, uh, open telemetry data, because it never leaves your leaves your uh, the data never leaves your environment unless it's uh, uh, until it's getting uh, secured. But what's more, much more important for me is not that, because still you need some boilerplate code to get to 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 make this get call visible. So yeah, that's at least. Right now, uh, unavoidable, unless you have a library that does that uh, under the hoods for you. But what's much more interesting for me is, are these calls. So there's no way we could patch the database driver for AWS uh, DynamoDB, and still we are getting automatically our open telemetry nodes in here. And most importantly, so the instrumentation library is called Amazon AWS um, Client Instrumentation. It's not like in this example, uh, the instrumentation library, my company, my product, my library. So that clearly means that whoever created these traces was not uh, um, um, did not our uh, did not need any uh, any kind of configuration from our side. And that's essentially where I wanted to head to today, because the vision of the Open Telemetry in, uh, um, Initiative is that. Uh, Every new library, every new database driver, every new functionality that's being uh, put onto the market should already be enriched and augmented with open telemetry code. So you as the user of this library should not necessarily have to be forced to write that code. It's good to know how it can be done. So 
especially uh, people who are responsible for performance and observability in, uh, in a company, should be know what they are asking for. So having seen that, it's, a good, uh, uh, it's good to know because at least if you're talking to, the, uh, to a developer, you can say, well, all I need from you are six lines of code. And then I can get the data I, uh, I'm after. But um, ideally, you will just uh, you will just uh, add one agent into uh, an application, and you get that free of charge. Or you're configuring um, if it's not if one agent is not possible, you're configuring an open telemetry exporter to report the data to a collector or directly to Dynatrace, and all of that is being taken care of uh, care for you at once. And like with uh, with our customized examples, this database driver offers a lot more than just this pure path node. We have, well, those two are automatically supported. I can say I want to have all of that and I don't care. I'm just storing now all of our, all of these attributes from the nodes, which means there's a uh, very often much more available uh, regarding monitoring. If, uh, if the developer of the driver or the, or the platform um, has already taken care of it via, via SDK, than what you would expect by various brands of, uh, of monitoring solutions. Dynatrace would, uh, might have made a different choice uh, about what to capture and what not to capture uh, than, uh, than the comp uh, competition. With open telemetry, no matter what you are using to, uh, in order to monitor your application, you're always getting the same data because the developer of that library has taken care of it already. It's really cool, Reinhard. I mean, I think you just made it very clear how powerful this really is as the whole community is kind of getting together mm -hmm. and starting instrumenting their specific libraries or frameworks. And then you automatically get this in your traces in combination with your own data, in combination with maybe what your out-of-the-box instrumentation gives you with the one agent, but it's really powerful. You're right. Exactly. And well, um, that's actually almost at the end. Um, again, I want to stress the fact that in Dynatrace, open telemetry is not a second-rate citizen. Um, you used, uh, I used to use the services uh, uh, link here a lot. Meanwhile, I'm going by distributed tracing because in distributed tracing, I can choose whether I want to see pure paths or I want to see traces that got, uh, got ingested from anywhere else. It doesn't matter whether they came in via one agent or via, uh, uh, via open telemetry protocol. I can actually do pretty much the same things now with uh, with traces coming in from open telemetry than with what we call pure path in Dynatrace. And sooner or later, the term pure path uh, will incorporate both of it. And that's essentially what I had uh, on my mind for the day. If someone, let me go and maximize that really quick. Um, if someone wants to know more, more about the topic, a few links here at the very end. Um, of course, there's the Open Telemetry Project uh, homepage where you can uh, read from start to end everything that's related to Open Telemetry. If you want to know uh, in more in detail how to uh, use Open Telemetry in AWS, uh, take a look at the AWS uh, Otel uh, distro. Uh, if you are interested in manually augmenting your applications using source code uh, modifications, take a look at that. What we didn't talk about uh, uh, at, about today, because I think it's, it will get less important uh, in the future, is the fact that you can also use auto instrumentation, especially for Java, where you don't have to, you, you're essentially modifying bytecode instead of source code, and you don't have to write this, uh, the source code yourself. If you want to know how to set up a collector manually, um, because you want to channel some data coming in from various sources for open telemetry, take a look at the, uh, at the open telemetry collector documentation. And if you want, really want to dig deep, you can actually take a look at what Dynatrace requires you to send open telemetry data into Dynatrace. Not necessarily does that data have to originate from, uh, from the uh, open telemetry SDK. Uh, I know for a fact from a customer who is evaluating logs of a specific application and they are creating open telemetry protocol, uh, protocol messages that they are sending to Dynatrace. Essentially, they are telling Dynatrace, 
about ongoings that happened in the past, but still Dynatrix is able to digest it and create pure paths out of it. And that's essentially what I had on my mind. I think we're anyways uh, way over time, uh, but I think it was worth talking it, about it. It was definitely worth talking about it. Never over time, just in time, because you did an, an amazing job in showing us all of the different use cases. And I think that was the, uh, I just want to reiterate what I said earlier, great overview in the beginning, and then you followed through with these examples. Reinhard, thank you so much. I am sure there's a lot of more stuff happening in the open telemetry space. So I'm pretty sure we'll have you back for another episode later in the year. Sounds good. Anytime. Thank you. All the best. Thanks, bye everyone. Bye.